Now, the white strip that you got is probably going to be way longer than you actually need. So I would cut an inch off of that and stick it inside your screen cavity, I guess, um, right up against the wall of it, like vertically, and to make sure those lights aren't going to clear your screen cavity. If it's too shallow, just take an extra layer four, put it on top and test it again. That's why we've got extras. If you have to trace more, go for it. And personally, I would take all the, uh, all the template pieces and put them in a Ziploc bag or something. If you throw them away, you are definitely going to need them later. Now comes the time to install the light that's gonna go behind our screen. I would strongly suggest also trimming the walls inside the screen cavity with an X-Acto knife to be as even as you can reasonably make them. This is what the LED strip is gonna stick to, and so the more even it is, the more surface it's gonna have to stick to. Now you take that screen part that you removed from layer three or layer four and trace it onto a piece of aluminum foil. Smooth that foil out as much as you can if needed, and then super glue that into the very bottom of the screen cavity, smoothing it down again and making sure none is on the walls. Now it's thinking time again. This whole screen assembly that you made is gonna be raised above your arm assembly by sort of a wall that goes around it. So it's kind of gonna be a little box in there and you're gonna to wanna to think about where you can tuck the battery pack inside there, inside this whole main housing, while still having the switch and the battery door to change batteries accessible. The only place I could think of on mine was under the latch in the front, but yours might end up differently, so do as you like, but you do want a plan here. I had to change my mind like three or four times and it was, a, it was a pain in the neck, so have as much of a plan as you can right now. As the video goes on, you'll probably see where I tried some other things, but you know, this is what worked for me. You're gonna wanna carefully punch a hole in the bottom corner of the screen cavity, um, handy to where you want the battery pack to be, and you're gonna feed the light strip up through this. I would test the lights to make sure they work before you seal them up in here. So feed the lights up through the hole, and starting at the end nearest the battery, you're gonna peel off a couple or three inches at a time of adhesive backing on that light strip and stick it along the walls of the cavity, working your way around. When you get back to the, the battery wire, just cut off the extra. It doesn't matter for these. The battery is gonna hang by a longish wire and that's totally fine. If you want to, you can tape it up out of the way for now. Eventually, you're gonna tuck it away with the battery. Now we're gonna make the screen itself. And we're gonna prep the frame for it first. Carefully, if you wanna cover this whole Pip-Boy and paper mache, and you don't have to, you can leave it looking as cardboard and that's a cool look too. But if you're gonna paper mache this eventually, you're gonna wanna paper mache right now around the very inside of layer five. To get good narrow curves, you're going to want to use really narrow strips. It's going to be a pain in the neck, but it's going to be worth it in the end. So set that aside to let it dry. Now using that layer four template you had, cut another piece, another layer four, but make the screen area smaller, but like half as much difference as you did for layer five. This is going to give you a little more space for taping in the screen when it's sandwiched between layers four and five. It'll also make the lights a little bit less harsh and direct. It's going to have a little bit of a lip between where you're looking and the lights themselves. If that makes sense? We'll call that layer four B. Take some rubbing alcohol and clean that transparency super well that has your screen image printed on it. It's going to be very hard to clean it once you have it all sandwiched and stuff, so I highly recommend doing that now. Center a piece four, like your original layer four, around the screen image on the transparency. This is the one I used. You do what you want. I will also attach um, a link to that if you want to use it. I would suggest taping it down just around the very outside edges to keep it in place, and then trace around the inner screen hole, just right around the edge of the inner screen hole with an exacto knife cutting out the screen. Next, center that screen on top of that 4B piece you just made and tape it in place. If the tape hangs off the edge, no big deal. Just You'll just trim it off with scissors when you're done. So this is gonna stay attached here to uh, this piece 4B. Now once layer five is dry, you center that on top and hot glue your layers 4B and five together, securely sandwiching that screen between them. Now, be careful when you pull the glue gun away, you only move away from like towards the edge and not towards the center, because hot glue strings will land on your screen and mess it up. I had two, I messed both of them up. <laughs> it's pretty easy to start over with another one, but I only had two, so I just sort of scraped off what I could and I called it wasteland damage. Having some room for error is exactly why I had more than one image on my transparency. Now take your screen sandwich, put it on the housing on top of layer four. Your housing, it's layer one, two, three, four, five, right? 
put it on top of your layer four over the, uh, the screen cavity with your lights and test the fit, the size, see if it needs trimming or anything like that to be nice and smooth around the edges. Make sure you like it. Make sure that the lights are still vertical and not squished. If they are, add more layer fours, but you probably shouldn't at this point. Wipe that wet alcohol off immediately with a new wipe, so make it as streak-free as you can. Especially that backside, you won't be able to clean that once it's glued in. And rubber cement that screen in place. For the shade around the screen, I cut a strip of cardboard, uh, I believe cereal cardboard, with that raised, not a notch, what's the opposite of a notch? In the middle, cut the length way longer than I thought I would need. Fit it onto the screen, cut those tapered edges where I wanted them to be, and hot glued it down. And I would personally take the battery pack and tape it onto the outside of that somewhere where it'll be off the bottom of it with minimal flopping around. Uh, someplace you can easily move it and the wires around in the remaining steps until you secure it in its actual resting place. Our next step is going to be attaching this screen face to our arm assembly. This is a little fiddly. You're going to want to look at images of a pit boy showing the angle of the connection between the housing and the arm. You're going to want to check from all angles, make sure it's uh, its angle of tilt towards the arm is appropriate, that's the right distance, forward or back. The spin of the face, you want that horizontal right along your arm, or it's going to cause problems later, as I discovered. When you figure out exactly where it should be so that the latch tongue is going to stick out and be able to horizontally, straight out, and going to be able to bend to land in the middle arm section where the latch should go, that's where you want it to be. You can tape on a strip of cardboard where that tongue is going to go if it helps you line stuff up right. For this next bit, you might need an extra pair of hands. It's really important to hold this screen angle in place while you mark where the screen face and the arm meet, the wrist end and the elbow end. Move it out of the way. Lay some hot glue at the internal ridges, like where the bands meet, along the axis of, mar of the lines, right? So go from the wrist mark you made all the way down the pit boy to the elbow end, and then quickly put that screen face right back in place, rematching those lines up. Now you're gonna carefully hold that housing at the proper rotation angle on the arm until the glue is cool. If you don't get it right, you can probably take it apart. <laughs> um, you might need to slice it off with an X-Acto knife. Um, it'd be kind of tricky, but I would recommend just doing your best to begin with. You can also consider adding triangular braces connecting the screen face to the arm, as long as they you know, stay hidden under the screen face. Now going back a minute to where we cut out the sections of the screen face for the different layers, we cut out the section that I called a tongue where the latch attaches to it, and we didn't use that yet. We're gonna use it now. Let's trace that onto corrugated cardboard, you want to go along the grain of the cardboard and you want to make the bottom extra long. You really can't make it too long because you're going to cut it off. I mean, you know, two feet might be too long. Now, obviously part of that tongue is going to attach directly to the screen face that we made, the part that we just glued onto the arm. Some of it's going to extend out. The part that's going to actually attach to the housing, I would cut a second or maybe even a third part and glue that on for a little extra thickness and better access to the battery changing and the switch and stuff if you need to. Also, I think it just looks a little bit better. That's just me. Now, depending on how your screen and your arm assembly came out, you might have to cheat on the width of the tongue, especially depending on how the battery fits under there. You might need to make it a little wider than you know, is exactly screen accurate. You wanna you wanna play around and see what works best before you start gluing stuff down. Uh, try thickening the top of the tongue more, do it less, experiment with the angle of the battery, and see if you can tuck it in back under your housing a little bit and still reach it. Just, you can tape stuff down if you need to see how things actually work. You also might need to cheat and have the tongue not come straight out of the housing, because it's got to match up with that middle section where your latch is gonna go. If you didn't get the housing just so on the arm assembly, you also might have to cheat and have the tongue not come straight out of the housing at like that nice 90 degree angle. You might have to angle it. This is why we're only doing the tongue now, so you can make sure that it actually fits what you actually did. You can see that mine is crooked and it looks okay. I mean, it didn't look great, but it's okay. It functions, which is the most important thing. Now it's time to trim the extra tongue to match the edge of the arm half. You want to make sure the battery still fits and make any adjustments now. I would suggest drawing a line underneath the tongue where your battery needs to fit once you move that tongue piece away. So tape the battery pack within those lines. Make sure it fits, that you can tuck the wires away, that the switch is accessible, that you're going to be able to open the battery pack to change the batteries. Make sure it won't move around when the pit boy's finished and you're actually wearing it. This is important to get right. 
If you're not absolutely certain that you can put the battery pack exactly where you decided it needs to go, just trace it, trace a line, and then when you glue it in, you'll know exactly where to put it. Battery side down, cover up is probably going to be the easiest way to attach that and still be able to access your batteries to change them later. Glue that battery pack in and I would glue or tuck the wires back out of sight. I also colored mine black with a Sharpie so they weren't as visible. Now you can cement the tongue in place on the housing. Now we're gonna make the wall around the, the main housing here that joins the screen face to the arm assembly. And just, you know, look at it. Look at pictures of a Pip-Boy from the side and the back if you want, if that will help you. But just imagine where if you're gonna draw, make a wall from the screen edge, I mean, from the screen housing edge straight down to the arm assembly about where those walls would go. And then just cut sections of serial cardboard to fit those planes. Where if you have like a, a change in angle on the screen housing, um, I would just start a new piece of cardboard. You can kind of see in the video how I did that, I hope. Um, it's going to be fiddly, it's going to take some eyeballing, it's going to be different probably on yours and to your sensibilities than mine. And that's fine, just be patient with yourself. This is a case of trust the process and it will work. You have to do some fitting, some retrimming, some holding up pieces and trying to figure out where you want to cut those lines or draw lines to cut. Whatever you got to do is, is totally fine. I would also suggest hot gluing each piece in before you glue the next one in. Glue each one to the housing, to the arm, and to the previous piece. I would suggest using a minimum of glue necessary. You wanna make it sturdy. Don't use so little glue that it's, that it's floppy. This is, gonna, this is gonna need some structure, but you don't wanna use so much glue that you get a lot of blobs in between pieces. Because once you get the whole housing done, we're gonna be paper mache over it. Paper mache A doesn't stick very well to glue, and B, if you have a bunch of blobs sticking up, it's gonna make it look weird when you get paper mache over it. So as you're gluing pieces in place, either smooth down any glue ridges while they're still fresh with a wet finger, and unless you're using like a high temp hot glue gun, which I would not recommend anyway, just a regular low temp hot glue gun, you should be able to just get your finger wet and smooth it down and it won't hurt, it won't stick. You can also smooth it down once it's cool with, um, with the hot tip of the glue gun, that hot nozzle, you can just sort of rub it, rub the outside of it on the hot glue and smooth things down somewhat also. If you have any tiny gaps, that's cool, just cover them with tape. And another tip, along where the housing sides, these walls approach the hinge, you might not be able to be game accurate and still open the pit boy enough, at least I couldn't. The housing wall kind of extends over the hinge to join up with that, um, join up with that plug on the back. And I, I couldn't figure out how to make it open well and still have that there. I mean, I guess if I was going to be smart and attach the, the hinge to the housing wall instead of to the arm assembly, that would probably have worked, but eh, that's not what I did. This foresight might allow you to do something better with yours. So what I did was I ended the housing wall about half an inch shy of the hinge and then I turned it down at a 90 degree angle to meet the arm that way. And I put a little hot glue inside to hold that 90 degree angle really well. And I just glued it down there. You can see on my model what I did. I also added an extra piece of corrugated cardboard along the ridge that starts at the top of the screen and down the side, just because I didn't think it stuck out enough. The next thing I would suggest making is the connector sort of wire reel on the back of the pit boy that sort of p-shaped piece that sticks out that would be um where the wire from your plug that's where that extra wire would be taken up if it were a real pit boy i would just draw out that p-shaped reel cover i would ex make that arm long enough to put that piece where i want it to be and then extend that arm over to fold down over the riser of the middle section and then just hot glue that into place i would use like double layer cardboard for this if you have it and if not just a couple or three layers of regular cardboard, just however thick you think that that ought to be. And you probably really only need one or two thicknesses to bend over the corner of the riser. Honestly, I probably could have stood to make mine thicker. You also want to attach the dial arm that sticks up by the hinge. I was gonna call it the dial arm. It comes off the housing wall facing towards your wrist edge of the pit boy, kind of, kind of sticking out over that corner. It's kind of a weird shape. Um, it's like um, it's like a circle that intersects with the 
housing wall and extends out a bit. You can look at the picture that I'm including here. You can look at a regular Pip-Boy picture and see how these work. I would cut three of this shape and I would actually, I think I actually used serial cardboard. It looks like I used serial cardboard here. I also had some pretty thin corrugated cardboard that I might have used. Just do whatever thickness you have and looks appropriate to you when you look at the picture of the Pip-Boy. So I've got, I cut three pieces. I've got one here and I've got two here that I connected with some tape underneath this paper mache. Put some tape here. Put some tape across here too, I think, as a little bit of support for that paper mache. And this is why you want all your pieces together before you start, ideally because the space between the pieces I made to fit this. So you're going to want to make sure you do that. And then just hot glue those bits down. You probably will actually want to hot glue it down before you tape those two pieces together. This part I didn't do until the Pip-Boy was finished, but I was unsatisfied without having done it. But you want to do this ideally before we paper mache everything. And now it is time to paper mache all the things. Let me except for the screen, the battery, and the hinge paper mache, everything else. Just to give it a nice smooth, this is all one piece thing. I mean, unless you don't want to paper mache it. You can leave it cardboard if you want. That's totally your artistic choice. But if you want to paper mache it, now's the time. If you have a small brush, that can really help you push the paper right into corners that your fingers don't really fit. And again, just a reminder, you don't have to paper mache everything all at once. You can do some, let it dry, do some more, let it dry. And that's probably a really good way of doing that. Just so, so the, if it starts to feel like it's damp, or like the pieces aren't sticking, or if you have too many layers or something, just take a break, let it dry, come back to it. Now, one nice thing about paper mache is you can paint it. So if you want the color more accurate, you can do that pretty easily. And now would be a really good time to do that. You can also sand paper mache. So if you don't like the lumps and bumps on it, you can sand it either before painting it or just to have it smooth and not paint it at all. Finally, one last paper mache pro tip for you. Mod Podge makes a dishwasher safe version, which is a whole lot more water resistant than regular Mod Podge. So if you're concerned about protecting the surface of your Pip-Boy, do a coating or two of that dishwasher safe Mod Podge is gonna be a lot safer. I don't plan on wearing this anywhere it's gonna get wet, so I didn't do that. Now that everything is paper mache and nice and dry, we can attach the latch. First, you wanna super glue the small non-moving part of the latch to the bottom of the tongue. And I found super glue worked pretty well. Now, when you attach the larger moving part of the latch, you wanna make sure it's going to attach to your small hook part appropriately. So I would hook it into that small part and then just lay it down against the other side of your arm assembly. If it lays down nice and flat, awesome. Trace it and super glue it there. And if it doesn't, you can add some pieces of cardboard to get the proper, you know, height and angle that you need. So now it's time for our finishing touches. The trickiest part to explain anyway is what I'm calling this connector plug. I'm gonna tell you what I did, which may or may not be helpful to you. This is gonna take creativity and fiddling and looking around and some amount of luck. You could probably make these parts out of cardboard if you really wanted to. And if you were good at making round shapes out of cardboard, you could paper mache them if you want. I didn't go that route because I got lucky and found some stuff that worked. You could use, if you were going to make it, you could use uh, toilet paper or paper towel tubes that are already round so that you don't get the, the sort of crinkly round shape that you get from bending corrugated cardboard. You could maybe use pipe insulation. I've used that on my previous Pip-Boy. It's like a little pool noodle that goes around pipes in your house. Um, just cut those down to size. And that you might even be able to plug and unplug. You can also just look around places for things the right size and shape. Your priority is for shape and this lightweight. I would highly suggest you avoid glass, but you can paint anything the right color with nail polish or spray paint. I would look at dollar stores, beauty supply places, hardware stores. A pharmacy might give or sell you empty medicine bottles. And make sure when you go looking around that you bring your pit boy with you for size comparison. I'm gonna briefly tell you what I did for mine in case that's helpful to you. Yours might be entirely different. The white, the white cylinder is one of my husband's pill bottles and I poked a hole on the end with a nail that I heated up on the stove. I'm not suggesting you do that. The little white pointy piece, I cut off a mechanical pencil, painted it white with nail polish. The wire is a, is a phone charging cord that stopped working. So I saved it for craft purposes. I tied a knot in one end, fed it up through the white cylinder and the little pointy piece. And then I glued the black cap on and then I glued the brown cap onto the black cap. I couldn't find out good glue for these plastic things. You guys might know more than I do. I just shoved a lot of hot glue in there so that it kind of overlapped physically and wasn't just sticky to hold them together. And it seems pretty sturdy now. And then I poked a hole in the wire reel uptake thing, poked a hole in there, stuck my wire in. I didn't glue it because I don't feel like it's, it seems pretty sturdy and I haven't glued it. I may at some point if I turn out to be wrong in that. And then I colored a little black circle around it because it seemed like it looked better to me that way. 
And yeah, the black cap and the brown piece, I painted with nail polish. Again, your mileage will most likely vary. Then I hot glued all those bits onto the Pip Boy, where after careful consideration, it looked to me like they belonged. And then we're just down to doing the final bits and bobs. Little bolts here were tiny screws that I just bought at the hardware store. I stuck them in a piece of cardboard, painted the tops of nail polish. Right here, you could do the same with nails, tiny nails. I got tired of painting little things, so I just used dabs of nail polish. I'm not totally happy with it, but you know, it's, it's good enough for my patience level at this point. I drilled little holes for these knobs that screw into stuff. And I screwed them in. I think I also glued them too, just to be secure. This is a bottle cap that I glued on. These were also little things that I found at the hardware store. That's a knob. Those are um, like little grommets. I put two of those in there. The labels I printed out of the same image that I printed to cut up for the layers pattern, but I just did it full color. Cut this out, stuck them on with paper mache glue, and brushed a little more over the top to, uh, to seal it in better. These vent lines in the Pip Boy, I did actually cut in with an X-Acto knife after drawing them with pencil to make sure they were going to be straight. I, I, I painted this on with nail polish, but I don't like it. I don't like how it came out one bit. Now I looked and looked and looked for some flat red lights, anything that looked like a light. It wasn't going to light up, but I wanted it to look like it could. These buttons were the closest I could come. And then I glued the pads back in, this time with the intent of them being secure. And I think that gives us a final Pip Boy. I don't think I forgot anything. If anything's confusing, please do email me at dianagenta at gmail.com or just leave a comment on the video and I'll get right back to you as quick as I can. Also, please let me know if you make one and if you can get a picture to me, I would love to see it. I'm really trying hard to get this out in time for cosplay for convention season. So I'll be very excited to see how you how you work out the more creative parts of, of this project. And it was super fun. I hope you guys like it. Y'all have fun out in the wasteland. Don't get killed. <laughs>